And the meeting format will go as follows. I know we have a lot of people in the room. We have people listening at home on Zoom. Uh, we have some invited guests that I'll ask to come up and uh, speak. Uh, the public certainly, time permitting, will be allowed to speak. And then the councils will then engage in any questions that they may have. And we do have some invited guests here. Uh, in advance of tonight's meeting, I did want to acknowledge some people who are in attendance and thank them for coming. Uh, Senator Joan Lovely joins us via Zoom. Representative Tom Walsh, Representative Sally Kearns, Peabody Police Chief Griffin, Captain Richards, Mayor Betancourt, and we have representatives of Mass Department of Transportation, often referred to as Mass DOT, Paul Stedman, John Gregg, and Dan Feldman. First item on the agenda, I'd like to read the motion just so everyone knows what it is. Motion was made, move that the Municipal Safety Committee open a discussion regarding the dangerous road conditions on Route 114 and Peabody and invite Representative Walsh, Representative Kearns, Senator Lovely, Chief Griffin, Captain Richards to the next Municipal Safety Committee meeting to hear the public's concerns that have resulted in new, numerous Peabody residents' deaths over the past 12 to 18 months. <clears throat> Before I ask the invited guests to speak tonight, I'd like to share my personal connection to the stories you're about to hear and some brief comments. So the first speaker you're going to hear from tonight is a gentleman by the name of John Malachi. John is a neighbor and a friend, a business owner in Peabody. He literally lives right down the street. And John lost his brother recently, probably about a year, year and a half ago. The next person you're going to hear from is Rachel Delacroach. Rachel is a close personal friend of my wife's and myself. She lost her son, Nick, as many of you know, just a few short months ago. Quite frankly, that was a tough one. So literally, after the council meeting, having some dinner, the mayor happened to be there, some other council members, me and my wife, we were approached and we were told of the situation. That was a very difficult night and week. <clears throat> and lastly, Mr. Dan Frechette is here. Mr. Frechette, I do not know personally. We've had some communications. I wanted to welcome him and invite him to be like to come tonight, share or not, and he is also here with us tonight. <clears throat> Excuse me. So many people have asked me, why even have the meeting? What is going to change? I have elected officials say to me, we've been working on this con constantly, continually. But here's the difference. The difference is that you all showed up tonight and you all tuned in. Tonight, you all, you're all here to demand change. But we are not looking to place blame. We are pleading for help. And I hope that is the message that comes through tonight. The truth is, my community, your community, our community, we're in pain. Tonight is the beginning, it's not the end. Many of us will have opinions tonight, but please respect that we are not the experts, and that is one of the major points of this meeting, is to get the experts' eyeballs on this dangerous roadway where lives are being lost all too often. You know, I've grown up in Peabody, I'm 58, when this road was built many years ago, it was a two-lane road. Now it's a five-lane highway. There's a center lane. Maybe 20 or 30 years ago, it made sense. But since that time, we've had Walmart, Brooksby, strip malls, restaurants, large home improvement centers, and large car dealerships, i.e. development. Maybe it's time to look at the situation. And also, I do not believe it is a Peabody problem or issue, but we should lead on the issue, because this road goes to Peabody, to Danvers, to Middleton, to North Andover. So my purpose is to be here and to help our state delegation to reach out to their counterparts up in Middleton in North Andover and to go back to the State House to get the funding that it needs to look at this situation, to get the traffic engineers involved. So that's why I felt it was important to have this meeting. 
As many of you know, when you take a left-hand turn on Route 114, you are literally putting your life in your own hands. In closing, for those of you who have lost loved ones on Route 114, please know that you do not grieve alone. The entire community grieves with you. Thank you. This time, I'd like to ask Mr. John Malachi to come to the podium. Please say your name and your address for the record. Hello, my name is John Malachi. I live at uh, 37 Benevento Circle here in Peabody. I apologize if I uh, crack a little bit. Uh, this is uh, obviously a very emotional thing to speak about. On May 15, 2020, it was a beautiful sunny afternoon when I received the worst news anyone could ever receive. My brother, my best friend, my business partner was tragically killed in an automobile accident on Route 114. He was 50 years old, he had a lot of life ahead of him, and he was tragically taken from us. After receiving that news, I had to deliver that same news to my parents. Something a parent should never have to experience is being told that their child has passed away. On that day, my parents' lives ended as well. Doesn't matter how many children they have, doesn't matter how many grandchildren they have. The loss of their son, their firstborn, has caused them great grief and hardship. They refuse to go on with their lives. They've given up. Unfortunately, or fortunately, my office is on Route 114. On a daily basis, I have a constant reminder that my brother is no longer here with us. Now, I know this is an uphill battle. I know it's not going to happen overnight. But something must be done about this road. How many lives, how many families, how many tragedies have to occur until something is done. Thank you. Rachel. My name is Rachel Delacroach, 3 Terry Road, Peabody. My name is Jacob Delacroach, 3 Terry Road of Peabody as well. Good evening. Jake and Nick's father is traveling for work, but he's joined on the webinar as well. Um, I want to thank you, say thank you to the City Council, Mayor Betancourt, for allowing us to speak this evening on this issue of life and death. Thank you to the state legislators and their staff who are attending this evening. Thank you, Representative Walsh, Representative Karens, and Senator Lovely. I look around the room and I see so many people who are here, especially teenagers and young people, and it's really hard to get teenagers to stand up for something. Can I ask them to stand up for a minute? Could you all stand up? I, you know, the one thing that's been getting me through the past five months is the love from all of you guys. And I'm really proud of you for showing up tonight. Thank you. And thank you to my other friends and family who've come out to support the changes to Route 114's traffic issues. I'm here tonight. I'm going to talk about three things. First, I'm going to tell you why I'm here. Second, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Nick and Nick's accident. And third, I want to share a little bit of data and history of traffic and deaths and accidents that underscore the need for change on 114. Please keep in mind that it is a five-lane road with a middle lane for left-hand turns. Most roads of that nature have a different way of turning. I'm standing here today. because my son Nicholas, Jake's identical twin brother, was killed on 114. On 
on the stretch of 114 that runs through Peabody, Danvers, Middleton, and North Andover, there have been 16 fatal accidents since 2002. My son's death in July being the most recent. And actually, I think there was one since then in North Andover, actually. I'll share some other shocking numbers with you shortly. I want to see changes made to help make sure no one else loses a loved one on this dangerous road. I'm here to ask you to take action to make 114 safer. On July 15th, almost five months ago, my son Nicholas was driving his motorcycle on Route 114 and over Street from Five Guys towards Route 1 to go home. My son, Nick, never made it home that night. That evening, Nick left work at Trader Joe's. He stopped at Five Guys, and then he was heading home along Route 114 towards Route 1. He was killed when another driver cut across five lanes from MacArthur Boulevard towards the plaza entrance in front of where the Burlington Coke factory was. Move to receive, Mr. Chairman. This is the so picture moved. of the accident. And if you look, you can see that the accident, the car crossed, hit, hit my son and crossed over, and the accident is in the other two lanes. Um, I whited out any telling information, so you can't see details. Which one? Motion received, all in favor, any opposed to vote, thank you. If there was a median divider instead of the hazardous left turning lane, which today I learned is called the suicide lane, I would still have two children. My son Jake would still have his identical twin brother, and I wouldn't be standing here taking up your time tonight. 114 is a heavily trafficked five lane state road, busy enough to have two lanes heading in each direction, as well as that left hand turning lane in the center. None of this is new or news to anyone. For years, there have been discussions and studies done to remediate the issue. I found a memorandum dated November 1st, 2012 from the Mass Department of Transportation Highway Division regarding a safety operations and access management study of part of the stretch of 114. And it, I'm just gonna give you a couple of quotes from it. The relatively high crash rate in this corridor is due to the number of intersections, many of which are signalized, and the high number of driveways. For example, the section between Brooksby Village Drive, MacArthur Boulevard, has a high crash rate due to the two-way left turn lane, and many conflicting points from the adjacent driveways. It also states, traffic medians are helpful in separating opposite traffic flows and enhancing traffic and pedestrian safety, especially on multi-lane roadways. An article in the patch from May 25th, 2018 states, the Mass Department of Transportation is in the early stages to improve a stretch of 114 in Peabody that it says is in the top 200 crash locations in the state. Construction on the $2.7 million project is expected to start in 2021. Got a couple of weeks left there. I don't think it's gonna be done. Anyone, if, I'm curious, I know that I'm not looking for an actual answer, so it's a rhetorical question, but I'm wondering what happened to the plans to improve the roadway that have, were in the newspaper and that were supposed to start. Are they in process? And um, what do those plans include? There have been 19 accidents at the intersection of MacArthur Boulevard and 114 Andover Street, and that's the intersection where my son was killed and where their brother was killed. There's a website that I worked closely this week with some people um, in the Department of Transportation who were amazingly helpful, um, and there's a website where you can collect the data, and so the website's been active since 2002, and during that time, looking at Peabody, Danvers, Middleton, and North Andover, that stretch of 114. There have been 16 fatal accidents. At least three of those have family members present today. 1,000, 
627 non-fatal accidents, 3,262 property damage accidents, 535 where the reason was unknown or unreported, totaling since 2002, 5,440 total accidents on 114 in the past 19 years. North Andover is currently working on a Route 114 corridor improvement project. What about us? If there were a median strip instead of the hazardous suicide lane, I'd still have two children, and I'm going to keep saying that probably till the day I'm gone. To counterpoint that businesses might suffer with a median divider, Route 1 is a strong example of a road that has successful businesses and a median strip. A median divider with lights and designated legal U-turns would allow the businesses along 114 to flourish and it would allow access to the residential neighborhoods as well, but most importantly, people would be safer. This is a list of articles and reports of the unsafe conditions on 114, some dating back to 2012. Um, Move to receive, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All in favor? Any opposed to vote? And I want to make sure to give these copies to the legislators that are here as well. For anyone who's driven down 114 and moved into the turning lane, if you could just picture if you've been there before and someone's coming from the other direction and it feels like they're coming right at you, and you always hope they're going to make their turn before you have to make your turn as you're facing each other. I just think about that moment um, a lot. I can't even count the number of people who've reached out to me to say, I too know someone who was in an accident on 114, or I was in an accident or almost in an accident on 114. That road needs to be changed. I'm here tonight to emphasize the importance of making 114 a safer roadway. I lost my son because of the lack of safety on this road. I'm here to ask the legislators to bring this forward. I'm just going to go back to my number two for one minute um, on my first list because I always do things a little out of order. Nick Delacroach was an 18-year-old talented, gifted musician. He was an amazing drummer. He was in a band with his brother, Jake. He wrote music. He learned piano. He took vocals. He sang. He was in the a cappella group at the high school. He was in honors chorale. He was the lead singer, along with his brother, of their band. He was supposed to start college with his brother this fall. He had ideas about going into the field of music or engineering. And his dad and I still say we wonder what he would have done next and what he would have done and, and we can't know that. He was 18 years old. I have detailed data that supports the conclusions I shared about road safety tonight. I'd be happy to share them with anyone present today and to discuss the data and share my sources. I want to thank you to everybody who came out tonight, either in person or I know there's probably a couple of hundred people who said I can't get there but I'll be there on Zoom. Jake even said he's got some uh, Instagram people he, he communicates with in Japan, and in Japan they shared um, the information about it. You, you said there were people in Japan sharing about this meeting. Um, Nick, and I mentioned the music, Nick was also very active in the car community, and I've had people message me that they saw people, um, they saw a car in New Hampshire or Connecticut with the sticker that we've, we've had multiple stickers made to him. He was, he was an amazing kid. Thank you, Representative Walsh, Representative Karens, and Senator Lovely. Thank you, city councilors. Thank you, Mayor Betancourt. This is just the beginning. This is like an intro meeting that comes before the intro meeting that comes before the intro meeting. So I'm going to be reaching out again and again and again until 114 is safer. Thank you. Mr. Frechette.
My name is Dan Frechette. <coughs> Jackson Frechette was my son, is my son. Um, I was asked here to come speak for something that I also agree with that needs to be changed. Um, <coughs> my son passed away after he tried crossing five lanes of traffic, five lanes of a, of a road with his older brother. He didn't, uh, he didn't make it. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you, when I came in here, I didn't know what to expect, how to speak to people in your position. Um, my wife just told me to really speak from the heart. I wasn't prepared like uh, Rachel was. She did a lot better job than I'm about to do. Um, it's a problem, plain and simple, it's a problem. You know, I mean, like the gentleman before me spoke, what, how many more that has to happen in accident number five, number six, seven, all right, maybe now we should do change. Now, now, now that's the appropriate number. That's not acceptable. If you have a problem at your house, you fix it. If you have a problem at home, you fix it. PBD is your, is your home. It needs to be fixed. I agree wholeheartedly. Um, I don't mean any disrespect for that. I'm sure you guys are all, and women, are wonderful people and responsible. Um, so that's really all I came here to say. Thank you very much. At this time, I will give the uh, public an opportunity if everyone, anyone wants to come up, and then we're going to open up to the council after that shortly. So if anybody would like to address the council, please come to the podium, state your name, your address, and feel free. My name is Tristan. I live right off of Route 1, not too far from 114. Um, I'm going to try and keep this simple and sweet and not be all over the place. But as multiple people have already said before, the issue starts with 114, one being that center lane. I myself have had multiple encounters where I have almost lost my life or almost watched someone else lose their life trying to cross over from the middle lane across two oncoming lanes. The fact that there is a center lane where you can pull in and pull out anywhere you please without a traffic light or anything in between, you can cut across with traffic coming towards you. There's nothing to stop accidents, whatever it is in between. I believe that this center lane should not even exist. If it does continue to exist, we need more lights. There's a lot of things that we can do to change what is being, what is the issue as we're here for. Um, besides the center lane, there's um, construction that was recently done where I believe new pipe was laid down underneath and this stretches from where Nick lost his life I believe almost down to McDonald's. Now with winter coming up, the other issue is it's, un it's not level, it's, it's poorly paved to keep it sweet and simple. Now, once it gets cold, there's ice on the ground. All it takes is one bump for your car to lose traction, sending you into a ditch or to another car. Now, there's also Further down the road, there are parts of the lanes where the lines are completely faded. I myself, daytime, nighttime, struggle to find my lane while struggling to fight off other people coming into my lane. The issue is not just the center lane, not just the faded traffic lines. There's a lot of things that are wrong with the road. and. Forgive me for being all over the place. I'm not very good with public speaking, but I just wanted to make my point known that it's not just the center lane that is the issue for safety. There's a lot of things in between that have been an issue for, for as long as I've lived in Peabody. I moved here 
about 2012, and I've come into so many close calls, whether it's that center lane, the people coming into my lane because they can't see those lines, or whether it's unpaved roads, now people get impatient or they don't want to drive on that uneven pavement. They will throw themselves over into the next lane because they don't want to deal with the, unbumpy ro the bumpy roads. There's a lot of issues at hand and it does not just start with the center lane. Thank you. We do have uh, some people on Zoom would like to speak. At, at this moment, I'd like to recognize Mr. Dana Delacroach. You have the floor. I thank you. Delacroach, we we have a we don't have a good connection. I'm gonna I have a speaker here in the auditorium. I'm going to go to them, and I'll come back to you. Maybe you want to call and log back in, but I'll, I'm gonna defer. I'll come back. Hi, right, thank you. you very much. You guys able to hear me? I can hear you. I'm not sure if you can. I'm just yeah. We can hear you now. Very good. Go ahead. Okay. You can hear me. Okay. I'll be very brief. Um, thank you all for attending. I just want to say, you know, there are several parents in the room, uh, I'm sure, and I know it's all too easy. For uh, I'm sorry, we, we, we've lost you again, Dana, with a, a bad signal. Dana, we have a very weak signal, you're not coming in. <laughs> At this point, we're going to mute you. Or bad signal. Or my other family members. Um, I cannot begin to tell you the pain. I've experienced over the last few months. It is beyond anything. Okay, no problem, I understand. Okay, I'll try to re-log back in and if I can, if not, no worries. Thank you, Daniel, sorry. Yes, your name and uh, address for the record, please. Uh, my, my name is Rob Refchenuk. Uh, I live in Salem, I work in Peabody. Uh, 99 Andover Street in Danvis, actually. Uh, I come before you guys to, well, uh, give you my input. I was actually, well, I am still a professional parts delivery driver for one of the dealerships that work there. And uh, traveling up and down 114, I can agree with the statements that were brought here tonight in regards to, you know, the safety and the, uh, the median strip. Um, you know, I can attest, I've seen guys cut, uh, cut me off you know, pull out, cut across four, four or five lanes of traffic. And I apologize if I, you know, stutter and all that. I'm not really too quite a, you know, a public speaker, but, you know, granted, I believe something here needs to be changed as a member of, you know, a community and, you know, that's true. Thank you. Yeah. We have one other speaker right now on uh, Zoom. Patricia, Patricia, can you yep. hear us? If you can, please, you're on. Yep, I can hear you, can you hear me? Yes, could you state your name and address for the record? Yes, my name is Patricia Liebau. I live in Northboro, 31 Smith Road, Northboro, Massachusetts. Rachel, Margaret, Nick, Jake, and Dana are my cousins. And uh, my background is an, I'm an environmental planner and I helped work on the 
uh, environmental impact statement for the big dig. Shortly after the funeral for Nick, I was visiting the family. I went to get coffee at Starbucks there on 114. I was astonished at the working of the roadway. There was no entrance or exit from the plaza. All anybody had to do was take their car and pull out onto 114. So when I tried to exit from the shopping plaza onto 114, there was a car to my left a few yards down, a car to that car's left a few yards down. There were about five cars trying to get onto Route 114. There was no entrance exit from the plaza. It was ridiculous. So I'd like to speak to the shop owners who may be concerned about losing business. I can assure you there are people who will not go to your stores because it is simply too dangerous. So in addition to the barriers and lights in the center line, I believe that the shopping centers should have defined entrances and exits because the cars were going out onto 114 in, in a race, it felt like a, you know, YOLO situation. Like you just had to jump out into the traffic. Maybe you could look at route nine shoppers world. That's what it, it the buildings around 114 over the last decades are similar to route nine. And I think shoppers world type traffic control is absolutely necessary. Please, please don't let other people die here. It's not right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, Mr. Delacroach, would you like to try that again? You're still there? Yes, hopefully this connection is much better. Much was, better, was, go right ahead, thank you. Very good. Um, thank you all very much, I'll be very brief. Um, I know there are several parents out there in the audience. Um, it's very important not to be complacent and think that this is an issue that may never affect you, may never affect your children, may never affect your family or friends, because it can happen to anybody. Um, it doesn't mean, matter if you're on a bicycle, on foot, in a car, or on a motorcycle. There's been deaths in all those, and they'll continue if nothing is done about it. I think quite simply, there definitely needs to be a median strip. Um, I cannot begin to tell you the pain I've experienced over these last five months. It is unbelievable, and it is a thousand times worse than anything I've ever experienced in my life, and it's going to be with me forever. Not being able to see my son or talk to him or do anything or see him grow up is the worst thing we as a parent can ever, ever experience. Do not let this happen to other people's families for no reason. My Nicholas wasn't speeding. He never had any accidents. He never had any speeding tickets. He was going home from work. Okay, do not let this happen to other people for zero reason. It's a problem that's easily fixed. It takes money. I understand that, but no amount of money is worth having a life lost. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Delacroach. Uh, on Zoom, Laura Johnson. Laura, okay. you state your name yeah. and address for the record. Thank you. Sure, Laura Johnson, 7 Esquire Drive. Um, I, I just want to start out with, I, I feel for Rachel, um, who is a colleague of mine in our family, and I echo the concerns and her call to action that she spoke of no parent should have to go through what they've gone through, especially when changes could be made that would greatly improve the roadway. I've lived in central Peabody most of my life um, between Wilson Square and currently on Esquire Drive. The discussion to fix 114 needs to include this part of the road as well. Every single time I get to the set of lights at the top of Esquire Drive, 
cars go through that red light every single time. I have to tell people that come to visit me when they leave my neighborhood, when the light turns green, do not go. Wait five seconds, double check to your left and check again. I would imagine that most of you do not have to tell your guests those instructions when they leave their house. The double light system there makes no sense. Cars ignore the first light and concentrate on that second light and try to make it through. And by the time they're through that intersection, I have a solid green light. The other issue on that stretch of road is that left turn only lane between Wilson Square and the 128, well, pretty much um, where Holy Cow is. Many of you I'm sure have driven down that. That is completely ignored. I have most recently seen one of our police officers completely ignore it. I'm not sure what the right answer is for that, but either remove it or enforce it. So I just wanted to add those that stretch of road to the conversation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, at this time, I'm gonna open up the floor to the Peabody City Councils. If they have any questions of the guests and attendants, any comments, feel free. Council Turco. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think um, the silence you hear from the council is the fact that we're not the ones that are, are going to fix this. The people that are going to fix it are right there, but we're, we're going to make sure that this gets fixed. Um, I want to say um, my condolences to Mr. Malachi, uh, the Malachi family, the Della Croce's, and um, the Frechette family. Um, I have a 17 year old daughter sitting behind me. And I can't imagine. Um, I hope this isn't five meetings. I hope this is one meeting. You know, the people that can fix this are here. So, Mr. Chairman, I, I think we should probably hear from them. Um, and, and obviously, that's up to the committee. And then maybe comment uh, after that point. Thank you, Council Turco. Uh, and I agree with you, and actually, at this point, uh, I think uh, Representative Walsh like to say a few words, and Representative Kearns, thank you. And then the Mass DOT is here, and I know Senator Lovell, you're listening, and thank you. If you'd like at any point to say anything, obviously, just raise your hand. Thank you. I'm out of practice. It's been a while since I've been here. Um, Again, Mr. Chairman and members of the council, uh, first to the families, obviously, uh, I extend my condolences. We've had conversations with, with several of you, and there are several more neighbors that, that we've had ongoing conversations with. Um, Representative Kearns, uh, Senator Lovely, and I um, have constant uh, contact with MassDOT and have relayed many of the concerns that have been expressed tonight. Um, uh, Paul is here from District 4, Paul Stedman, who is the director of the District 4 Mass Department of Transportation. And if it's okay with you, I'd just like to have him make a few comments. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good to see you all, councilors. Well done. <clears throat> thank you for being here. Thank you for joining your neighbor and friend and loved one and um, to all the young people, uh, thank you. Very powerful. I spend more time on Route 114 than I like to really admit because I live too close to it. And I'm up past Calitri's uh, in Danvers. So um, someone was, I'm on 114 a lot. These are all very familiar stories. It did not know, it did not know the number of crashes. So thank you for sharing that. I think when people come together, particularly in grief, that we can perhaps turn that into positive working together action to get something done. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to Paul Stedman, who's been very, very receptive to any, any calls I've made since I took office a year ago, a little less than a year ago. Um, 
and um, we will hear from him and we're gonna support you, Paul, and work together, so. And if we could just wait one second, Mr. Sedman, and just have Senator Lovely would like to say a few words and then Mr. Sedman, Senator Lovely. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry that I can't be there in person this evening, but I'm grateful to be able to join you virtually. Um, and I just want to extend my grief and condolences to all the family members who have lost loved ones um, as a result of the dangers of this roadway. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you for your leadership uh, for putting this meeting together tonight and just want to express my support working with MassDOT to, to make this roadway uh, better so that the, no one else has to experience this. I, I just feel deeply uh, <clears throat> troubled and um, I, I, I can't imagine as a parent um, that these, this has been just needless and I'm grateful to MassDOT for being here tonight and let's work together and make this more safe. So thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Stedman. Good evening. Uh, my name is Paul Stedman. I'm the District 4 Highway Director for MassDOT, uh, the Highway Division. Uh, we're based in Arlington, but PBD is in our service area, and uh, I, I appreciate the opportunity and the invitation to join uh, Representative Walsh, Representative uh, Karens, and Senator Lovely at the, at the meeting. Uh, first off, I, I really wanted to thank uh, John, Rachel, and Dana, and uh, Dan for sharing the stories about Robert, Nick, and Jackson. I think that's the, one of the most important parts of this meeting that I'll take away is, is hearing those stories and uh, uh, how it's changed, you know, not only your lives, but, but also uh, lives for many people who, who know, know you and knew them and interacted with them on a daily basis. Um, I think I, I just, I'll be real brief, um, but uh, Councilor Sassel, I think I picked up on a couple of things that I heard tonight that I wanted to focus on. One, I think you started off that it's a, it's a beginning of a conversation. It's not the end, uh, it's the beginning. And I think it's an important beginning to, uh, to try and start to bring about what the issues are that are affecting the roadway and, and then what maybe some remedies could be that could be applied to, to address them. Um, the second thing I heard was related to the center lane for, for two-way left turns. Um, and though while it may have been an appropriate solution uh, when it was first constructed a number of years ago, it may not be the, the, the most appropriate treatment for that roadway right now. Um, what I think our commitment would be uh, and, a, and a first step at kind of really trying to evaluate um, again what the, what the issues are that are facing the roadway would be to uh, do a, a, a very deep dive into the, the crash experience that's happened in, on the roadway at a minimum of the last three years. Uh, it could go further than that, but certainly what we typically do in the engineering side of things is we look at the latest three years or the most three, re, three years that are available. Um, we try to avoid looking at a small sample site. We want to we wanna look at a larger sample site so that we capture all the different types of, of trends or incidents that may be happening out there so we can get a real clear picture of what is occurring on the corridor in exactly what fashion. And that can help shape the discussion for solutions to address those issues. So the first step is to do that deep dive into the crash analysis. I've, I've spoken with Representative Walsh, Representative Karens, and Senator Lovely. Um, we're committed to doing that, and engaging a design consultant to, to start that review. And I think after that review is completed, then that helps shape really what is a, a purpose and need kind of description for, for the corridor. Uh, what's needed out there and what are we intended, what are we intending to accomplish? Um, you know, I've heard a median thrown out there. It's, it's, a, it's a great suggestion. Um, I also just know personally just driving through the corridor, uh, having discussions with Representative Walsh, Representative Karen, Senator Lovely, as well as uh, members of, of the city of Peabody, um, 
there's difficult or in some cases non-existent accommodations for bicyclists and pedestrians. So that factors into the long-term vision for the corridor. A, capaci a, a safety analysis may reveal some or, or there may be folks within PBD or even in, in the audience tonight that may have some, some ideas of some short-term fixes that could be implemented and should be implemented um, in a way of bringing out some immediate safety benefits. But as we go through that deep dive safety analysis to find that purpose and need, if we get to a point where I think we're, we're, we're all would feel that would, would be appropriate is that this is really more of a reconstruction type of effort than a, a simple, we're gonna go and, and, and do some, some routine maintenance out there. So as we shift from a maintenance type of operation to a capital improvement, I think someone referenced the, uh, the, the plan that's being developed for, uh, for North Andover, Route 114. Same thing, that's where then we draw in and we try and look at the, the entire corridor, not only for vehicles, for pedestrians, for bicyclists, for, for all users of the roadway, and try and craft a solution that will result in the safest uh, operation for all those modes of traffic. Um, those projects take time. Uh, if you're doing a quarter reconstruction and let's just say there was a meeting involved and, and, and someone mentioned uh, facilities for U-turns and I believe that one of the women who was speaking earlier mentioned uh, Shoppers World Route 9, an area I'm very familiar with. Um, to, to make those U-turn facilities uh, efficient and effective it, or to even just widen the roadway, likely to add sidewalks, bike lanes if they're, if they're feasible, side paths, things like that. It's gonna require right away. It's gonna require environmental permitting and none of those come easy. They're achievable, but they take time. So just in, in closing, you know, again, I wanna, I wanna thank, thank you for the opportunity to be here. I wanna again pass on my condolences to, to all the families and, and that spoke here as well as their family members and friends on their loss and uh, and just you know echo the, the comments made by the delegation that you know we're committed to, to to try and make a difference out here so thank you thank you um, anybody uh, on the council council turco and then councillor excuse me charis so th thank you that's um you know it's what what i wanted to hear but um, partially what I, I didn't want to hear. So I, w I was hopeful, and Mr. Stedman, if you could come back up for, for one second. It sounds as, as though this may, may have been the, the first discussion that's ever been had about the 114 corridor in Peabody, yeah, but, and I don't mean that disrespectfully, but I, I, we've been talking about it for years. So has there been no plan um, for the last several years to, to do anything? So there, there is, a, there is uh, and I think someone had mentioned it, uh, I think it was Rachel who brought it up earlier about the, um, the section, one of the sections of 114 in PBD from essentially uh, Sylvan Street over towards Esquire, Esquire Drive. And there, there is a project. It's gone through several iterations. It started as a quarter type project, like we were talking about, you know, just like I was talking about just a moment ago. Uh, then it, it was morphed into uh, uh, a high crash location intersection, two intersection projects. That's where it, actually where the, um, the nexus for the project was developed was there was high, two, a couple of high crash locations were identified, I believe it was Cross Road and, and Esquire Road. Uh, when we initially looked at that, it was looking at from a quarter level, Sylvan Street to Esquire. Funding became an issue. PBD's in the Boston metropolitan region. It's difficult, I'm gonna be very open and honest, it's difficult to program a state highway project through the Boston MPO. Um, North Andover is in the Merrimack Valley. We were able to do that in the, in the Merrimack Valley. So it's, it's, it's a little challenge, I'm gonna be honest. It's challenging to get funding for, uh, for state highway roadway projects. Uh, the, the, the delegation has been super to work with on that. And, uh, and try and bring, help bring resources. So the project kind of remorphed into that intersection two locations. We started looking at that from a, kind of a conceptual level. And as I mentioned before, once you start getting into reconstruction, you start looking at 
pedestrian accommodations, better bike accommodations, those types of sa safety elements, not just moving cars, right? We, we're, we're very much uh, dedicated to trying to take on a complete streets approach to our projects. So when we started looking at two intersection projects, Crossroad, Esquire Road, it, it again kind of be, kind of became clear, it's like, what are we doing here? The real problem is Esquire Road to Sylvan Street, like we had originally talked about, and trying to improve safety, not only for vehicles at those two high crash locations, but also improve pedestrian and bicycle accommodation. So that project has now swung back. It's in the, what I would say, where it needs to be, and I'm hopeful that it's where the, the council and the city of Peabody wants it to be. Um, and we have a design consultant that's on board, Howard Stein Hudson. They have, they had initially started doing some of the corridor work. Oh, sorry. Oh. Okay, no, so they had started doing some of the corridor work. They morphed into the intersection. We're getting them back to the corridor work. So that project, while I think it was mentioned that it was planned or thought to start construction in 2021, that's not gonna happen, but that project is moving forward Sylvan Street to Esquire Road. Thank you for the information. Uh, I'll, I'll just end with um, one thing. Uh, I, I think it was two years ago, there was a slip lane proposed um, in the Danvers Peabody for 128, and uh, we had a meeting here, and um, the residents wanted a sound wall. Um, if you remember, Representative Walsh, and, and at the time, Representative Speliotis <coughs> was here, and um, Mass DOT said, oh, no, it's too expensive. We can't fill the sound wall. And I remember being very impressed with Representative Speliotis. He stood up and he, he took the microphone and he said, there'll be a sound, a sound wall. And six months later, there was a sound wall. So I really hope that our, our state delegation can move this a little bit faster than it sounds like um, it may go. Thank you. Council Chair. Thank you, Chairman. Um, to the families, I'm deeply sorry for your loss. I have a very close friend here in the audience who lost their child, not in an accident, but I know how deeply it hurts that family, the people who are close to them, myself. So I understand not what you're going through because I'm blessed and it hasn't happened to me, but I do know what it, it does to a family. Uh, I am the Ward 4 counselor. I have worked in this area and, and reached out to Representative Walsh many times with my counterpart, um, Masoulis, because we share that area. He's on Ward 3, I'm Ward 4, we share that area. And we've been, I can say f for myself and Masoulis and the majority of this council, we've been pushing and pushing to get that road safe in areas that is um, very troublesome. I myself was in a very serious accident just at that almost the overpass of 128, just because of what actions was going on with people. When we were develop, <clears throat> when the mall was being uh, developed with Lifetime, we sat in meetings there and Council Walsh remembers. And I was pushing to make sure we have better lights, and crosswalks, sidewalks. And at that time there was a committee and they're like, well, we don't need sidewalks on 114. Like hell you don't. Like hell you don't, you do. We have some, but we need more. We were talking about bike lanes or anything else like that, we do need all those. And I know it is a community, it is a effort that uh, Peabody and Davis and the state needs to work together. Um, and I, I, I do believe my colleagues here are, are willing to work and do whatever it is. And I know this community is willing to do whatever they can do. Um, I, I won't be here after January, but that doesn't mean I cannot be involved. Council Walsh, you know, I have a lot of information over the last six years, especially in that area, uh, hearing from my constituents and also Ms. Sulis' constituents on the, on the safety of coming out of those side streets, Loris Road, Esquire, Violet. We had a neighborhood meeting in the spring of uh, Violet and Buttonwood Lane, 
and they talked about the speeding that goes down 114. It's an issue for them because they have to use 114 to get home, and they have to deal with that issue that's going on. So I ask you to um, look at that also, of the, the patrols. Um, also, crackdown and on the trailers uh, unloading vehicles on 114. You know, you reach out to the, I've reached out to the dealers myself. And the issue is with that is there's a lot of what they call the gypsies um, drivers. It's not people who work for the dealership, it's subcontractors. And they dump their cars and they, and they, and they move on. Uh, so there's a lot of issues, and again, as we say, this is the first of a conversation. Uh, please don't leave me out after January. I, I do have a lot of information I'd love to pass on and work together and, and certainly make this safer. Thank you, and happy holidays to everyone. Councilor Rosigno. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first, I, I'd like to um, say thank you for everybody that spoke passionately. Um, your words were heartfelt, and they, I think they were felt by this entire council. Um, I'll, uh, um, to Mr. Stedman, thank you very much for your candor, to be honest with you. Um, that was refreshing, saying that it is difficult to get things done. My, my issue is that everything seems to be looked at in a vacuum. And what I mean by that is we have a Central Street project that is already on the books. It's already kind of happening. That's maybe three blocks away. Then there's a vacant area between Wilson Square and through the crash area that you were mentioning. Um, and then the issue isn't just one area or another. It's literally from Wilson Square all the way to Route 1 on 114 in Danvers. So it's not just this crash site or that crash site or this crash site in Danvers. It's literally from Wilson Square to Route 1 in Danvers. The entire area needs to be redone, revamped, and looked at as an entity, not just a piece, not just another piece, not just 114. The entire thing has to be looked at from stem to stern. It really does. Y you can't. And, and, I'm, and I don't mean this to a Jew, I really don't. I, I know that it takes a lot of money. I understand that, I really do. I know the Central Street project that we're talking about is $12 million, and that's a lot of money. That is taxpayers' money, that is, but it's needed. This is, this is what gets people frustrated, is yes, that's gonna be great, and then all of a sudden you get out of Wilson Square and you're down to two lanes and it's literally, okay, let's fly past the next person and beat them so that I can get to wherever I'm going. And then, okay, you get past that, and now you're on 114, and again, it's crash up dirty. So it's, it's not just a one isolated instant, instance, it's literally a huge area that has to be looked at at its entity. Thank you. Councilman Sulis. Did you? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wasn't really gonna talk because this is my last meeting and I'm taking my mask off, so I hope no one gets upset. Um, this issue, I can bring it back to 1985 when I got elected <clears throat> on the city council. The issues I was bringing up at the time was Loris Road, Esquire Drive, 114th from Wilson Square, Nothing has been fixed. The issue is the same, and this is going on almost 40 years. And, and uh, I feel the frustration. It, it took something very sad for everybody to open up their eyes. And this issue really touched me to, uh, to see what the families had to go through to lose their a child for us to wake up, you know. And I'm looking across from me and all I see is fix 114 now. And that's what I say too, fix 114 now and stop appeasing us, you know. Um, I would handle this in a different way. You may not like what I have to say, but I would go back to uh, my bosses and I would tell them, get your civil engineers down to 114 and straighten this problem out. We had the issue with the barrel, with the, uh, uh, the wall that uh, Tom had mentioned. 
we got Ted Spilliotis to get out there uh, and, and get that wall for us. He did it when no one thought we could, okay? And you can straighten this out. I know you can. You've got to go back to your bosses and tell them what happened here this evening. If you have to go to the governor, go to the governor, you know? Uh, to sit here and give people false promises and, and say to them, uh, we're working on this. We have a small sample site, a big sample site, a deep site. We don't even understand that lingo. Get your civil engineers down here and fix this. You know, um, I, don't, I don't want to uh, I'll leave you people thinking that uh, I'm angry over this, but that's what I'm gonna leave you with. That's how I'm gonna leave this council. I'm gonna say I'm pretty damn angry that we can't fix a problem like that. Every 10 years we have a, um, uh, uh, we have a master plan the city goes through. We fixed downtown, we uh, made our road two lanes, we made it four lanes. And then when somebody got killed on 114, we stopped it. I mean, on, on Main Street and Peabody Square, what did we do? We changed it. We got rid of the four lanes. It went back to two lanes. And why did that happen? That's because there were three or four fatalities on that street. Well, we have the fatality on 114. If we have to change it by putting uh, two lanes back on 114, then let's do that. We did it on Main Street. I don't have the answers to this. Your civil engineers have the answers to this. So bring them down here. Get them down here and straighten this problem out and straighten it out now. Thank you. Council Welton. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, again, as my fellow councillors have, I just want to extend my deepest uh, condolences and sympathy uh, to all the families and, and the loved ones and the friends who've had to go through uh, such terrible tragedies. Uh, I agree with my fellow co-counselors that this is an issue that no matter the price tag needs to be addressed. Um, I, I thank you, Mr. Stedman, for uh, giving us a little bit of background with what's been worked on so far. I also understand that this is a project that's going to foreseeably take a minimum of five years before you see any impact. Realistically, you have to find the funding, you have to find all sorts of different construction options that are available. So what my request uh, to you, Mr. Stedman, and to our delegation is what can we do now? What options do we have now? It's important that we work on the complete streets and the master plans and we move this forward in a way where ultimately we have exactly what we want, but what can we do in the short term and the immediacy so that if we can have an intervention that prevents the loss of one more life or one more accident that it, we're doing everything proactively as we can. Um, I appreciate everything that you're doing and our, delegate, uh, our delegates are doing at the State House, um, but there's gotta be something that we can do now. Uh, we shouldn't forego better in the pursuit of best. You know, there's, there's an option for us to fix some, some things. What can we do as a city to, to do that? So if you would commit to coming back to us with any suggestions, I know that you would have a willing council that would listen and clearly a community that is uh, very interested in, in seeing some improvements made. Thank you. Thank you, Council Welton. Um, uh, his Honor, the mayor is in the audience. Mayor, not to put you on the spot, I don't know if you'd wanted to. I know we've said a lot. If you'd like to come up, obviously. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, Councilor, for, for having this meeting. Um, I really have nothing to add to uh, the words that have already been said because the powerful words have already been said. And I want to thank each of you for, for speaking tonight uh, and everybody who's here. Um, it sends a powerful message as to how the community feels. Um, it's nothing that brings a community together more than grief and, and try to on, trying to honor those that, that passed. And 
One thing I do know, uh, working with my colleagues at the state legislature, we have some outstanding legislators here uh, that are, are uh, working for the city of Peabody. And I know they have big hearts and I think they uh, are fully on board with what needs to be done and the work that has to be done from this meeting. So um, I'm looking forward to next steps. Uh, I pledge my commitment to making this happen and, and helping in any way the city uh, can. Uh, very powerful words have been stated by council members and um, we've made changes, positive changes here in the past. We can do it again by working together and I think this is the start of something. I'm looking forward to working with my colleagues at the State House and, and to make that happen. And uh, again, let's, let's make sure that the spirit of those that have passed away help us make this happen. So thank you, everyone. Uh, Rep Representative Walsh, did you want to say a few words? Just in closing, um, this, this conversation tonight really was powerful. Um, but it is not really the first time that we have had conversations. I mean, I, th th there's certainly power in numbers. Um, but the, the issues of Route 114 um, is ongoing. And it's something that Senator Lovely, Representative Kearns, and I have been working with, along with Councilor Saslaw, Councilor Matsoulis, and, and Councilor Sharest especially, because they're the three that are most impacted uh, as ward councilors in that section. Um, you know, certainly we are all committed to working with our chief of police, uh, our traffic, Captain Richards, um, everybody at the police department. There are things that, that could be done now, uh, small things, but at least we're moving toward uh, the bigger picture. And, and that is, you know, looking at the timing of some of the lights, especially at Loris and Reynolds Road. It's, it's you know, there was an accident there last week. Um, and, and what happens is when people are going to take that left-hand turn, uh, people aren't stopping in time because it, there needs to be more timing. So that's something that I've asked uh, Paul Stedman and, and District 4 to look at. Things like that that maybe this this small things, but the incremental and, and we'll, we'll get to where we need to be. Um, the bigger picture is, as Paul Stedman explained about, you know, do we look at a median all the way down, the environmental impact. Unfortunately, everything takes time. But what I can tell you is that we are all, Senator Lovely, Representative Kearns, and I are committed to working with all of you, with the council, uh, Mayor Betancourt and our, our, all our, our departments, public services, and everybody uh, to try to make it a little bit easier and a little bit safer than it is right now. So, thank you. Thank you. If I could say one more thing, I'm going to take this opportunity to uh, congratulate and, and best wishes, extend best wishes to Councilor Shares, Councilor Matsoulis, and Councilor Sasla, who will be leaving the council, and I had the opportunity to serve with all of them. Uh, so I just wanted to wish you all well. Thank you. So that's a good segue. Um, from, as Councilor Matsoulis said, Councilor Charest, tonight is also my last meeting. And, uh, I, you know, personally, I, I could not be uh, any more prouder of what happened here tonight in this hall. Um, a couple of closing thoughts. You know, Speaker brought up Route 9 in Framingham, it's a perfect example. Uh, my job brings me on the road, and if anyone's ever been out to Long Island, Long Island has a probably a seven lane highway, just like 114. And what I noticed when I was out there the last couple of months is that you couldn't take a left. You had to go and you had to take a right, and you went up, and you had to either go to the light and take a U turn. Or sometimes they'd have to even do something a little bit more intricate than that. But you could not take a left. And, I, and it immediately brought back thoughts. So, and as I said, someone said earlier tonight, Route 9 is the same situation. I used to travel Route 9 many years. You cannot change directions on Route 9 east or west without going to a light and taking a turn. To the younger generation that was here tonight, Council Turco's daughter's here. I have two sons, 17 and 18, in the audience tonight. And to the other young generation who will vote, does vote, stay involved. You came out tonight, you participated, you'll make a difference, thank you. You know, at the end of the day, and I've spoken to Rachel and John, and you know, you heard it tonight, it is gonna come down to dollars, but these are our dollars, they're our tax dollars. So now our responsibility is the delegation was here, and after we leave this meeting tonight, I know my councils will continue the pressure, but you as citizens must continue to reach out and make the phone calls and call 
the delegation. What's happening? What's going on? How can I help? So please come to stay involved. To my friend, Mayor Betancourt, I know he's committed to safety issues. He always has been and he will be. And I know he'll continue to push this. And, uh, you know, one la two last final thoughts. While I do have the mass delegation here, or excuse me, the mass DOT, I'm just going to throw it out there. But I think it really, quite frankly, the jug handle needs to be looked at on Route 1 for a number of reasons, both traffic and to be a good neighbor. Our people to the north, the south, wherever, it's a crazy road, and we don't need this jug handle. And I'm hoping that councils that are here can take that on, but it's long overdue. And I want to thank everybody for their participation, the families, you're sharing your stories, how powerful it was tonight. And we learned from our youth, and I'll close this meeting with three words fix it now. Motion to close. Motion to close the public hearing. Excuse me, I, I do have two quick items. I apologize, I'm a little caught up in the moment there. I apologize. Two quick items we have on the agenda. Second item, motion by Council Turco. Read the motion. Move to refer the issue of right turn on red to the Municipal Safety Committee and invite separation of Walsh, Community Development Department, and Catherine Ridge to the next scheduled Municipal Safety Committee to uh, discuss the motion. Um, Council Turco. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, I see Captain Richards is here, otherwise I, I would uh, defer this to another night, but since he's here, um, the issue was brought up uh, much through the election cycle of um, no turn on reds. Um, it was actually first mentioned to myself and several other councils by Representative Walsh. I'm gonna let him, um, Mr. Chairman, can we take a two minute recess? So that That's fine, two minute recess, we'll come right back, thank you.
Folks, you can wrap it up. We need to continue this subcommittee meeting. Thank you. I know, he's just dropping off with John. <laughs> Motion to go back in the session here for the Municipal Safety Committee, City of Peabody. And if we could have Council Turco, if you folks want to continue, if you just take it downstairs or outside, we just need to continue the city business, please. Thank you. Captain Richards. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Thank you, All Captain. Right, Council Turco. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Captain Richards. Captain, I think you, um, you, you and I spoke briefly on the phone. I think you've spoken to other councilors and maybe Representative Walsh. You know why we're here. It's just uh, kind of an opening meeting about uh, the possibility of removing some right turn on reds, the responsibility whose who's, um, uh, domain that's in. Um, from what I read, it's, it's in city domain, but I, I, I may be incorrect on that. But if, if you could give us your expertise on the issue. Certainly. Um, we have a history of the no turn on reds. You people know why that came into existence back in the 70s. It was for a gas saving measure, right? So the federal government implemented the no turn on reds. It went across the country. Massachusetts was the last state to implement that in 1980. At that time, 98% of the intersections had no turn on red signs put up, which over time we realized was way too much. So it is up to the cities and towns to look at each intersection, the traffic engineers or their, their representatives to look at each intersection and evaluate them. And I know that they default to having no signs there, but depending upon crosswalk locations, sight line issues, there's a whole litany of things that they look at, especially for pedestrian safety, that they look at to determine whether or not those signs go up on those intersections. Maybe some of them they were being overly cautious and put them up and we can look at those and decide that those are no longer needed, but it's gonna to have to be a comprehensive look by the city engineers and the police department in conjunction with us to look at these intersections and determine whether or not those conditions exist and whether or not those signs need to remain there. I know when it comes to schools, heavy pedestrian areas or right-hand turns when there's a crosswalk right adjacent to that intersection, they're very, very cautious about taking those signs down because what will happen is you'll have people pull up to those lights, they see the red light, but they know they can turn right on red, they'll look left, if nobody's coming, they'll roll right through that sign and take the right, and if somebody was in that crosswalk and stepped off that crosswalk, you're gonna have an impact there. So we have to make sure public safety is paramount, but we also have to look at these intersections to try to devise a way to keep the free flow of traffic going and to keep cars moving. So we will work with the city uh, engineers and whoever they wanna have come out to look at these intersections, evaluate them, and decide whether those signs are necessary or if they can come down. And we may have to experiment in some of these places and do a trial period and take one down and see how that works and evaluate crash studies and everything else in those areas. Thank you, Kevin. That's exactly what I was gonna ask you. If, if some of those we could try on a trial basis. Um, but as far as, uh, you know, uh, I would likely intend on m making a motion to refer the issue to the uh, DPS department in their engineers. Um, how, how would you suggest it goes? Do you want to come up with some possible locations? Do you want us to come up with some possible locations to look at? I don't think we could just send the, the engineer out to the, all the no turn on reds in the whole city. So I just want to know where that referral will come from. Do you have any in mind that you, you might want to take a look at? Certainly at we can look at some. I know Forest at Lowell's been one that people have talked about. I know Allen's Lane's been one that's talked about, but it's close to Higgins and there is a crosswalk right there. That was discussed in the past. Uh, Linfield Street at Summit Street and uh, County Street has been discussed. So I can certainly come up with a list of those that we could kind of target first. But certainly the councilors who live in the city that drive throughout the city may have some intersections that they want to have us look at that may not be on my list. So you can certainly forward them to me or you can forward them to DPS and we'll kind of create a priority list and start to look at them one at a time. You know, I may do that uh, with the suggestion or the um, input from the, from the rest of the committee. Um, possibly make a motion to have a, a limited amount investigated um, and, and forward you that list at a later time through discussion with the council. 
Um, with that said, thank you very much. And I, um, is there any questions from the, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll give it back to you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Anybody on the, anyone on the committee, any councils have any further questions that they'd like to ask? Council Manning Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, through you to Captain Richards. This is not regarding uh, the right on red. Wow, that's a big, gross bug. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, this is not about particularly the right turn on red, but along the same lines, I'm wondering how um, the motion I had made some time ago, maybe uh, quite a while ago, about the signs that lack ordinances. Uh, how's that going? I will get together with Mr. Lavoisier from DPS because I believe, and I hope I'm not wrong on this, I thought they hired a consultant to actually to come in and to do that audit. So I would defer that question to Mr. Lavoisier because I think the DPS was kind of looking into that and had a company doing that audit for them. Well, that's a great answer. Let's, let's see what Mr. Lavoisier has to say. Thank you. I apologize. I couldn't hear the first question, so. The, uh, we had been looking into checking out the signs in the city that aren't backed up by ordinances. And the captain, Richards, seems to think that you picked that up and you're looking into that with a consultant, maybe? Yep, we already have that. Um, we have it in electronic format and um, paper copy that we just got. Um, our electronic format hasn't been downloaded onto our computers yet, but it has already been done. So we can get, to that, get that to you pretty soon. Oh, that's great. Uh, okay, that's wonderful. So that's an inventory of all the signs in the city. That, that Period. Do, do Whether they meet ordinance or don't meet ordinance, just every sign is inventory. So we have, you know, so we can sort it. Okay, so it hasn't been hasn't been sorted yet. No, no, it's in a database. You can, if you're looking for something in particular, you can sort it through the database. Um, to I, match it, to see if there's an ordinance that backs it up. That's yep. really my the crux of yep. my issue. Yep. Yes, you can. We can do that. That's great. That that's progress. So uh, you need to. Get us an information of okay. all the good things that you're doing, Mr. Labossier, because got, that, got is, that was a, a huge task that we has haven't taken gone some through it time. all yet. So as soon as we get through it all and check for mistakes and whatnot, um, then we'll authorize it through the um, consultant uh -huh. to download it, and we'll get it right to you. That's impressive, and I thank you very much. I'm looking forward to going through it. Thank okay. you, Council Chair. Thank you, Chairman. And uh, again, just to, if I could ask Captain Richards, two motions that I made. Um, I know staffing was low, Captain, so I understand. But um, I'm not, again, if be able to follow up, I'm going to ask a couple of the counselors to uh, follow up on it. One is the, the modified exhaust um, ordinance that I asked you to look into. I'm not sure how far you are on that one also. Um, and then the other one was with the, uh, the scooters. The, if we have an ordinance, uh, you, lately you will, you're seeing more and more uh, different size scooters, you know, some with two wheels, some with one wheel. I'm not even sure what you call them and what is the, um, you know, you see them zipping around throughout the streets. So if that hasn't been, um, if you haven't addressed that yet, but if you keep it on your radar, I uh, certainly uh, would appreciate that. Thank you, Captain. I'll address both real quick. Okay. The, uh, the first one that you talked about, the ordinance with the modified exhaust and so forth, there is Mass General Law already on that, but we are We've collected some ordinances from other towns that have implemented them, and we're trying to take that language and we're trying to meld those different ordinances into a workable, enforceable ordinance here in the city of Peavy. So we're working on that. And as far as the other, the scooter part of that, I have Sergeant Hawkins working on that. He's a kind of scooter expert, and he's working on that to look up the general laws on those. And he's actually trying to create a cheat sheet for our offices that will define what the scooters are and what can be on the road, what can't be, and when, and so forth. And he's currently working on that. Captain, I really appreciate that. I know the um, uh, it, that the key word is uh, to be in to be able to enforce, and I, I get that. I understand. I know with the exhaust, when the uh, springtime starts to come, people are going to be get back annoyed about the, the the popping noises and everything else. So I do appreciate. It. And Captain, like always, thank you very much. You have always been helpful with me, and I do appreciate that for the citizens of Peabody. I appreciate that, sir. Everybody's all set on item B. We'll move on to item C. On item B, Mr. Chairman. Council Turco. Uh, Representative Walsh still here? I, I thought he... 
Representative, did you want to say something on the no turn on reds? Because I think this came from conversation through you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, once again. Um, just very briefly, this has been an issue that uh, when I was uh, among you on the, on the council uh, was a little bit of a pet peeve because I think that we have a lot of places within the city where we should be taking a look at the intersections. And I did say to Captain Richards and Chief Griffin the other day that I know of a couple places where the signs don't exist and I'm not gonna tell them where they are because I'm afraid that they, <laughs> they might put them. But I just want you to, as, as you think about intersections, consider um, in some communities where they put up a sign that says something like, come to a complete stop, check, and then you can proceed. So uh, if there are a couple intersections that maybe we could take that no turn on red sign down and, and just remind people they have to come to the complete stop and look, I think that we would accomplish the same thing. You know, in the city of Boston, uh, you have the walk lights and people take right hand turns and have to yield to pedestrians all the time and I do think that the, uh, the motorists in Peabody are savvy enough to, to do the same. So, um, you know, there are some places that you do need them but I, I do think we have too many and I think there are spots where, where maybe it would make traffic flow a little bit more smoothly. So I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll make that motion now to um, refer to DPS to have the uh, city engineers look at, um, and I'm gonna start with these locations. Councils are more than welcome to add to these locations. I'll forward additional ones. I'll start with the uh, Linfield Summit and County Street in intersections. Um, Forest, what was it? Foster Street and uh, Foster Street in Washington. Um, Allen's Lane in Washington and um, Forest Street and Lowell Street. Refer those uh, intersections for review of the no turn on reds uh, for any possible safety issues by removal of those signs. Any other intersections to add to the motion? Councilor Churrasen. Just on that motion, um, again, uh, the no turn, to take the no turn on red sign down from uh, Forest to Lowell Street, right? Um, I travel that numerous times and I can't tell you how many people go through that red light on Lowell Street heading east. And I, I gotta tell you, my thoughts, because I'm there every day and I tell you the people who live on that street uh, it would be extremely dangerous because of the, the way those, the car on the left branches way out and to you on your right, if you're gonna take the right onto Lowell Street. One, you can't see the cars that's flying through the red light anyway, so uh, I would be very cautious of, of, of that, Councilor Turco. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I'll remove that, that uh, intersection from the request. Which one to be specific for the court, please? That, that was uh, Forest and Lowell Street. Thank you, Councilor McGinn. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, through you to Councilor uh, Turco. Did you say Foster in Washington? Were you, were you referring to Swampscott Ave there? Are you? Yes, I, I'm sorry, from Swampscott Ave in, in Washington. Yeah. So that one, uh, that one actually did come down and went back up in response to a couple of near misses that happened there. Uh, we had crossing guards that uh, had specifically requested it go back up. Uh, so we did kind of have a trial there and uh, it did represent a safety issue with cars turning into the uh, crosswalk. So I'd, I'd suggest that one come off. Okay, we'll remove that one also. Uh, we're we're going to go with the uh, Linfield County in Washington, uh, Linfield County in, uh, um, in Summit Street intersection. We'll look at those ones to start and um, we'll make it easy for DPS and the police department for beginning well, maybe we'll remove those too. Let's see, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Labasi, yeah. Well, just to update you all on this, um, I got word today that we receive, we'll be receiving a grant, a bottleneck grant from the state that will be looking at all the intersections along the Washington Street quarter anyway. So we're already ahead of the game. We're gonna be looking at Washington and Foster, uh, Allen's Lane, and then the intersection with um, Linfield Street and Lynn, and Linfield Street and Summit. So we have a grant, they're already gonna be looking at that. The, state, the state's gonna do it themselves. They have a consultant on board, they're gonna send the consultant out and look at all these intersections for moving term, uh, turn, turning movements and um, our equipment in the 
uh, traffic signal uh, controllers, and if any timing needs to be adjusted. So they're going to be looking at that in depth, just so you know. Councilor Chuckle. Mr. Chairman, I'll leave the issue in, sub in committee until we hear back from DPS if uh, and withdraw the motion, uh, unless any other councilor would like to, to add anything, but I'll withdraw. I don't, I, I absolutely, I just had a quick question, Mr. Blasio, so just maybe my, th when do you think that you'll be able to be put back that stretch of road the way to the council? So I will, as soon as we hear from the consultant, I'll let you know what the schedule is. Very good, thank you, Council Chuckle. Mr. Labossier, while you're up there, can I can I ask you? I, I believe we got a traffic study that was done on um, that entire stretch of road somewhere around two and a half years ago. Um, that would include this information. That are we just looking for another study on the original study. Uh, so this this isn't a study. Um, they're going out actually looking at just the movements and the equipment and the timing. So it's to look at it and actually do the work. So it's not a study. So they're actually going to do the work. They're, the consultant comes in. They're working for MassDOT. They'll look at the intersections, report back to them what needs to be done, and then MassDOT will, will um, use their contractors that they already have on hand to go out and do the repairs. Thank you. Everyone's all set. We're going to move on to item C on the agenda. Council, uh, motion made by Council Gould. Moves to request that Captain Richards appear before the Municipal Safety Committee to provide the City Council with an update on the recommended truck traffic signage for Gardner Street. And I believe uh, Council Gould. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this goes way back. It's almost two years in the doing. And uh, we had a lot of hard work done by the neighbors of Gardner Street, Councilor Matsoulis, um, and the police department uh, through Captain Richards and Captain and uh, Sergeant Hawkins. And it was some uh, very in depth discussions, some Diagrams were made up, some new signs were proposed, and we got it through Mass DOT. Um, and then we went for appropriations. We, excuse me, we got appropriations through Mass DOT, and uh, we went to Mr. Labossier to um, get final approval. And things got hung up because we, um, it's being tied into the Central Street corridor. Uh, Pulaski Street is part of the uh, proposed sign change and traffic change. Uh, so right now we are in limbo waiting for the Central Street Carter to get into the new phase. Uh, would you like to add anything, Captain Richards? What he said. That's where we're at. So that's where we're at. And uh, I'd like to keep this in committee, Mr. Chairman. Absolutely. Thank you. Anyone else? Any further questions? Motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn.